So at the start of 2024, I upgraded to a MacBook Pro M3 Max and it has been the best upgrade I have ever made. Here's why. So I've been an Apple user for a very long time now. I have an iPhone, an iPad Pro, an Apple Watch, and even some AirPods. But when it came to a workstation, Windows was always the first choice for me. And the main reason for that was gaming. Almost all PC games are exclusively on Windows devices, so it was kind of the obvious choice. But recently, I've stopped playing video games altogether due to my interests and just my overall lifestyle, and I've begun focusing more on content creation. And my old Windows desktop that I've been using for four to five years has been starting to slow down when I start to edit large video projects. So I needed a workstation that was portable, was able to handle content creation smoothly, and also work together seamlessly with all of my devices. So I decided to finally upgrade to the MacBook Pro M3 Max. Let's talk about it. So the first thing that I noticed when I use the MacBook Pro for the first time is the build quality. The laptop feels extremely premium. There is nothing cheap feeling about this laptop and Apple has done a really good job with it. It is definitely not space black. I don't know why Apple marketed the laptop to be space black. And even in the marketing, it looked a lot darker than it actually does. This is just a very dark gray. What really impressed me though was the coating on this laptop. It feels like a blend of metal and plastic at the same time, but it doesn't leave fingerprints. You can see I'm touching the laptop a lot, but it doesn't really leave any smudges or any like fingerprints, even if my fingerprints are a bit like greasy or oily. So not only is the laptop really smooth to the touch, it also doesn't leave behind fingerprints, which is really nice. I also really appreciate how I can open the laptop with just one hand and how opening and closing it also feels really smooth. A lot of people were sharing concerns online about how the 16 inch would be too big, how it'd be too bulky or hard to bring around. But honestly, it is not that bad. It is very easy to bring around. And because of how thin and light the MacBook is, compared to some of the large 17 inch or even 15 inch gaming laptops that I've used in the past, this is very light in comparison and super easy to bring around. So I don't see the size being a real issue unless you really travel a lot or you really need to edit on a plane or in a car or if you have a very limited working space. Another aspect of the MacBook which I didn't expect to like is the physical user interface. The keyboard is extremely large and while it might not be as satisfying as a mechanical keyboard, it still feels really nice to type on. It's responsive, tactile, and it actually doesn't feel that mushy, which I was very surprised by. It's definitely one of the best keyboards I've used on the laptop. And the main feature that I really like is the Touch ID. It makes it so easy to authorize everyday transactions or logins that I need to do, and I just love that I can use it similarly to how I use Face ID on my iPhone. My only concern is that sometimes using Touch ID becomes so convenient that I just end up forgetting my passwords and I have to reset it a bunch of times. The trackpad on this MacBook is the best I've used on any laptop laptop ever. It is big, super smooth, satisfying, and tactile. Basically everything you'd really want in a trackpad, and Apple has done an absolute masterclass on this. Unless I'm doing something very specific, I'm almost always using the trackpad. Another aspect of the MacBook that is absolutely unrivaled is the beautiful display. It's bright, the colors are extremely vivid and crisp, and the larger 16 inch model just means that I have an even larger screen to work with, which is so nice for everyday use. And as a content creator, having a really good screen is extremely important to me. So I really like that about this MacBook. I think another reason why the display looks so nice is because the bezels are so thin. It makes the screen feel so seamless with the laptop that sometimes I even forget that the bezels exist. But it also made me quite concerned because the bezels are so thin, it feels like it could break at any moment if I'm not being 100% careful. So whenever I'm closing and opening the laptop, I'm just extra careful not to slam it down. And I also wanna quickly talk about the notch on the top. There were a few discussions online about the notch and how some people might say it's really annoying and they don't like how it looks on the screen. Honestly, it doesn't really bother me at all. I really don't mind it. I just genuinely forget that it's there. It is so small compared to the overall screen that I don't really notice it. The speakers on the MacBook Pro are also really good. While it may not be as good as a pair of expensive headphones or an expensive dedicated Bluetooth speaker, the sound quality is still amazing. Before I got the MacBook, any time that I'd want to listen to music, I would usually connect to a Bluetooth speaker or just put on a pair of headphones. But with the MacBook Pro, 99% of the time, I just use the speakers on the MacBook Pro because they're just that good. <laughs> The MacBook has a total of three USB-C ports, one HDMI port, one SD card port, one AUX port, and a charger. That is not very convenient. 
And within the first day of purchasing my MacBook, I had to also get a dongle just so I could connect to my mouse and my keyboard. The MacBook charger itself is also really nice. Whenever I'm using a gaming laptop, I'm really used to having a very large brick. So for example, this is the charger for a razor blade laptop. And as you can see, it has a plug and it leads to a really thick brick, which then has another cable leading to the actual charging part. And I very much prefer just having one large brick that's plugged into the wall and everything else is just one long cable. The charger itself also magnetically attaches to the MacBook and it even has an indicator light to say if it's still charging or if it's fully charged. Another major reason why I got the MacBook Pro is to do with the Apple ecosystem. I don't know what black magic Apple has done or whose soul they sacrificed, but the ecosystem is truly incredible. And one of my favorite examples that I always love to show to my friends is the fact that I can use my iPad as an external monitor for my MacBook. And for me, this is extremely useful. I'm always used to having double monitors every time I'm working. So being able to have a double monitor set up wherever I go completely wirelessly is insane. And if you own two Apple devices, you will also know just how good AirDrop is. I can now AirDrop large files between my iPhone, my iPad, and my MacBook completely seamlessly. And it makes studying so much easier as well as just general file management. So some of the main struggles that I faced when transitioning to a MacBook Pro was to do with the keyboard and the software. So the first main issue I found was the fact that the control key is no longer the control key. Apple's version of the control key is the command key, but it's not even placed at the bottom left, it's placed next to the spacebar where alt should be. Another issue I had was with the delete key. Even though it says delete, it's not actually delete, it's just a backspace. If you actually want to delete, you have to hold FN and press delete. Visually, I definitely prefer Mac OS over Windows. It's just a lot more aesthetically pleasing to look at. But when it came to file management, I feel like Windows Explorer does a better job than Finder. Navigating through folders is much easier and it's just a lot more intuitive and structured. And the most annoying part of Finder is the fact that files can be stored literally anywhere. And the only way you can turn that off is by turning on the snap to grid function. Another thing that I really miss from Windows is the ability to snap Windows on my desktop. This made multitasking a lot more difficult on a MacBook. Thankfully, I was able to find an app called Rectangle, which does allow you to snap your windows. And while it's not perfect, it definitely helped a lot. But aside from those small issues, macOS is actually really consistent and it has never really failed me. The software has always been running smoothly, consistently, and I've never had an application like freeze or crash on me. So as a previous Windows user, macOS can be a little bit frustrating at first, but it's extremely consistent, reliable, and it never really fails on you. So for that, I think the software is actually really good. Video editing on the MacBook Pro is so satisfying and it makes me actually enjoy creating content again. Everything feels so snappy, smooth, and it can handle 4K footage effortlessly. Footage playback is basically instant and render speeds are extremely fast. I no longer have to worry about waiting for my computer to render or slow down when I start making larger video projects with higher resolution video files. The MacBook can easily handle pretty much everything that I've thrown at it. And the craziest part is that it can do that even without being plugged in. The performance on the MacBook Pro is basically identical to when it's running on battery and when it's plugged in. Unfortunately, I don't own any other MacBook, so I can't do a benchmark and compare them, but I will link some videos in the description that do compare the performance of different MacBooks. The MacBook itself is also very very silent and it runs very cool. The only time that I really hear the laptop fans or feel the laptop really heat up is when I'm rendering a video or when I'm playing a game of Minecraft with shaders. But aside from that, the laptop is always really cool to the touch and almost completely silent. It is a huge jump from gaming laptops that would turn into a jet engine every time I try to open a tab of Google Chrome. In terms of overall battery life, the MacBook Pro is also great. I've been able to use this laptop unplugged for pretty much the whole day, which for me is around like 12 hours of usage and it will be at around 30% battery. And that's with a mix of video editing and just general usage or browsing. I haven't tested exactly how long the battery can last, but for a full day of just general usage, it can comfortably do that and more. So one major concern that I really have with the MacBook Pro is the overall durability. I briefly mentioned this earlier, but a lot of people made complaints about the MacBook Pro being very fragile. I personally haven't had any issues with it, but that's just because I just got it. And also I'm very careful with where I bring this and where I use it. I also purchased this case from TomTalk and it's actually really nice. 
It comes with a really nice soft inner lining and some hard shell corners, which help to protect the MacBook. This was the most affordable but high quality case I could find and I definitely recommend it. I would personally recommend avoiding any hard shell cases or screen protectors. I've also heard that those can actually crack your screen. So just be careful with those. So if you're still watching, you're probably thinking, should I get a MacBook? And damn, I should really like and subscribe. <laughs> I would only really recommend getting the MacBook Pro M3 Max if you have a very high budget or if you're pursuing content creation like me. If you're on a budget and you're not really interested in video editing, then I definitely recommend getting a refurbished M1 or M2. If you're still thinking about getting an M3, then I recommend just going for a lower spec one. But at minimum, you should at least get 16 gigabytes of RAM. 8 gigabytes of RAM on a laptop is useless. It will not do anything. It won't last you a very long time. It'll just be a huge waste of money. In terms of form factor, I definitely recommend getting the 16 inch model over the 14 inch. It's just much better for everyday use and the larger screen really goes a long way. But yeah, overall, the MacBook Pro M3 Max, absolutely amazing laptop. I love it. I've been using it as a daily driver. Like I literally don't touch my desktop anymore. It has just been that good. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.